Number 20. A mass spectrometer is being used to separate common oxygen-16 from a much rarer oxygen-18 taken from a sample of old glacial ice. Blah, blah, blah. The ratio, the ratio of the masses of these two ions is 16 to 18, and the mass of oxygen-16 is 2.66 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. And they are singly charged, okay, great, and travel at 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second in a 1.2 Tesla magnetic field. What is the separation between their paths when they hit a target after traversing a semicircle? All right. So first of all, um, let's just draw a little picture, all right, to see how we can do this. So you have two particles. Uh, let's write uh, maybe one in blue, okay? And let's write the other one in red. Okay, so I'm going to write them right next to one another, but pretend that they're kind of on top of one another. And why don't we do this? Let's do, um, let's call, let me highlight this over here. Why don't we change oxygen 16 here to, uh, it doesn't matter, red? I uh, know, eh, let's do blue. doesn't matter, even though I just changed it. And let's call oxygen uh, 18 then the red one, all right? Now, if you notice, I'm going to talk, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe their curved path, all right, in a magnetic field. If you just look at the formula over here on the right side, that the radius is going to be equal to the mass times the velocity over the charge multiplied by the magnetic field. Notice that as the mass changes, in other words, as the mass increases and everything else, just, let's just assume, stays constant, what happens to the radius? The radius of the curved path also has to increase, right? So what I realize is that oxygen 16 is less than oxygen 18. Now, I don't know what oxygen 18 is yet, the actual number, all right, for oxygen 18, but I'm not really concerned about that because I know oxygen 16 means that there's 16, you know, basically protons and neutrons, and uh, in total, that is, and uh, oxygen 18 has 18 in total protons and neutrons. So I know oxygen 18 is heavier. What that means then, if I know oxygen 18 is heavier, I know that oxygen 18 will have a larger radius of curvature. In other words, Oxygen 16 will have a smaller radius, so watch what I'm going to do here. Okay, I'm going to now draw a line. Let's just pretend this line will represent the radius, okay, of oxygen 16's curved path. All right, and let's now pretend that this now represents, and I don't know how long it should be relative, but I know it should be longer. All right, let's pretend that that uh, line now represents the radius of oxygen 18's curved path. And let me try to move these maybe a little closer to one another. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I know the blue one is going to move in a circular path. Okay, so I'm going to do my best, thank God for autocorrect though, to do this. Eh, that's not, that's almost, that's a good circle, but it's not with that in the middle. That looks a little better to me for the blue. Okay, I'm not going to get too particular here, but it looks to me like this blue line now, right here, will represent the radius, right? If I had two of those, it looks like it would create the diameter now, all right? I'm going to leave it, though, as the single radius. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to do it for the red. Okay, so bear with me for a second. So let's draw a bigger circle. Hopefully this looks kind of like it. Let's see. I don't know. That might have been a little bit too large. Uh, yeah, just, just a tad. <laughs> just a tad. One more time. Let's hopefully that one works. That might look a little more reasonable. Let's check. That's, so let me see. Let's see how close I am. Copy. Paste. And I think I'm way off. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm way off. So why don't I do this? Ah, I have an idea. Why didn't I think of this before? Huh, here's an idea, right? Let me check the blue one now. Copy. Okay, that one's very close. You see that? That one's really good. So that one, let's leave that alone. Okay? But this red one, I'm going to have to change. Because it's not good enough for me. Nope, you're still going to mess that up. All right, not bad, right? That's going to be close enough. So that's that's relatively close. Okay, so now let's get rid of this. All right, and these are now the two paths, okay? These are basically now the two paths that the objects will take if they're starting at the same point. Now, what they said was they're going to travel in a semicircle. So in other words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a horizontal line here, okay? Let's assume they start here, okay, start I don't care which direction you choose. Uh, I'm going to say that they're going to curve and they're going to go, you know, counterclockwise. 
Okay. So in other words, they're going to end at the red one's going to end at this point right here that I circled. Okay. And the uh, blue one will end at this point. Okay. Now, I was going to ask, are there any questions about that? But uh, yeah, I won't know if there are. So let me now remove this little line. So basically what I want you to do is just don't consider anything beneath this. Okay. And maybe what I'll do is I'll erase it then. All right. So let me just take my little uh, eraser. And let me kind of just erase this part because we don't really need this. It's a semicircle. All right. That's close enough. And let's just get rid of this. All right. So now, and let me maybe draw these points in black. That might be a little better. Let's draw, let's put a little black point there and a little black point there. Okay. Those are the ending positions for those two. All right. Now, how can I find the distance right now? Let's, let's see what the question is. It says, what is the separation between their paths when they hit a target? Meaning the target they're going to hit is somewhere over here. And uh, they want to know the separation between them. Okay. In other words, what we're trying to find is we're trying to find this distance right here. I'll call that X for now. How do I find it? Well, I find it. Don't worry about the math, but how can you find it if we know the radii? Well, you have to remember that if you know this radius here, the blue one, remember that two of them now will create the diameter, right? Is that correct? If I had another radius here, that whole blue line would represent 2R is equal to then the diameter, right? Hopefully that makes sense for that blue circle. Now the same thing is I'm going to consider now for the red one, okay? If this I label R, if this is the radius of the red curved path, then if I add another radius to it, obviously, right, that would now represent the diameter, okay? So there'd be another R there, right? And that would now be that the two radii for that would equal the diameter, okay, of that red circle. Now consider this, you know, you, if you know the diameter of the red circle and you know the diameter of now this blue circle, I know it's only a semicircle, but who cares, right? How do you find this now piece? How do you find that? Think about that. If pretend the red, pretend this red highlighted area was 20 and this was 15, how would you find this distance? You're like, oh, five. Yes, that's what you would do, right? That's what you would do. You basically have to do this. You take the diameter of the red circle and you will now subtract the diameter of the blue circle. And that will then give you your answer. And remember that the diameter of the red circle is simply two radii, right? And the diameter of the blue is essentially two radii for the blue. And that's the same thing as getting your answer. So notice what I realize now. I realize, heck, if I can just solve for the radius of curvature, right, for the red charged particle, the red oxygen 18, and then I could do that for the blue one as well. And then I can find my answer, right? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use this formula, okay? So let's do this. Let's start with oxygen 16 because they gave it to us. So I'm going to do the blue one. Okay. So the radius, I'll just write of six oxygen 16 is going to be equal to the mass of oxygen 16 times the velocity of oxygen 16, all divided by the charge of oxygen 16 multiplied by the magnetic field that oxygen 16 is experiencing. So the radius of oxygen 16 will equal the mass. Now they gave it to us. Look at that. 2.66 times 10 to the minus 26. What's the velocity? Well, they told you. They're both going to be charging at 5 times 10 to the 6th. Good. 5 times 10 to the 6th. Okay. What is now the um, <clears throat> what is now the charge of oxygen 16? And they said that they are a singly charged. Okay. So what that means, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It does not matter because remember, this charge is technically the absolute value. So what's the charge value of a single unit of charge. It's an elementary charge that is known as either a single charge on a proton or an electron. It doesn't matter. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And then multiply that by the magnetic field that they 
uh, this uh, auction 16 was placed into. So now here is the radius of auction 16. Take out the calculator and calculate it. So 2.66 times 10 to the minus 26 times and 5 times 10 to the 6th. Divided by parentheses, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 times 1.2. And it turns out that the radius here is going to be point two, uh, excuse me, 693. 693, and that is in terms of meters, okay? So guess what? I found now this little part. All I'm left to do is find this, and I can get my answer, you see? All right? So let's leave this on down here, maybe. Okay, we'll leave that on down there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this all to red. All right, maybe I'll move it over a little bit. Change it all to red, and I'm going to change some of the subscripts, okay? So we're going to color. I'm going to go to red. Boom. That's a little too dark. Where's the red? What am I doing? Hello? That's, that's, that's kind of bright, isn't it? Huh. Where is it? Sure. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this all to now oxygen 18, okay? So here we go. So this is now oxygen 18. That's not the right color. Yeah, what are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? So here's the thing. The velocity of oxygen 18 was the same because that's what they told it. That's what they told us, the same velocities, okay? The magnetic field strength is the same. The charge on it is the same. The only thing that's going to change now is the mass of oxygen 18. It is no longer this. How do we find the mass, though? Well, we simply have to... Sorry, this is really bothering me. I have to change this. <laughs> okay, one more. Oh, no, what happened now? That's better. Now it matches. Okay, my eyes are going... Yeah, I'm going cross-eyed. Um, so now how do I find the mass of oxygen 18? Well, they gave us a ratio, right? They told us the masses, the ratio of the masses is 16 to 18, right? So basically now what I realize, I can create a simple proportion, right? I can say oxygen six, it's 16 over 18 will equal then the mass, the actual mass of oxygen 16, which was given 2.66 times 10 to the minus 26 divided by then the unknown mass, right, of auction 18. It's just a simple proportion. So you know how to calculate this. Cross multiply, right, just, I mean, just, right, all you're going to do is this. Move this X on over there, move the 16 on down, move the 18 on across, and there you go, right? That's all it is. So calculate now for that X. So it's 2.66 times 10 to the minus 26, multiplied then by 18 over 16. And this comes out to be now about 2.6. This will work out to be about 2.99 times 10 to the minus 26th, and that's in terms of kilograms. So plug that in now. 2.99 times 10 to the minus 26th kilograms. And, you know, we could have, I, I could have just leave left the variables alone and done some mathematical substitutions in here. And you you could have done that too. It doesn't really make a difference. But I just decided to calculate it all out. So let's just erase this now that we got our answer. And let's now find the radius of oxygen 18, okay? So that it's that value, 2.99 times 10 to the minus 26 times 5 times 10 to the 6th, divided then by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th times 1.2. Now I must say that it's probably better also uh, to actually do it with the variables without actually calculating it kind of the way I did, um, 0.779. And the reason for that, it has nothing to do, it has nothing to do with the logic of how to solve the problem. That, it doesn't, it's, it's independent of that. The reason why is because every time you're plugging something into the calculator, it's an opportunity to plug in a value incorrectly. So the less plugging in into the calculator you have to do, the better. Now the problem is, though, some students, a majority, I would say, um, from my experience, myself included, sometimes I don't necessarily like to work with formulas all the time, like substituting and then this goes into this and that goes into this and this goes into that. Sometimes it get, gets a little confusing. So what I like to do is kind of calculate numbers along the way. Um, however, though, in terms of uh, in terms of minimizing, I think errors, I think that's the best way to do it. But then, on the other hand, right, if 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 you're not very good with the algebra there and substituting formulas within formulas within formulas, uh, then you know you might make a you might be more likely to mess up that way, and this way you might be less likely to mess up with. You know, it totally depends, but. Anyway, I don't know. Okay. Anyway, just get to the point. Just 
right? You're like, all right, dude, just, just finish the calculation. That's why we're here. We're not here for the life lessons. So it's not even a life lesson, right? I mean, it's really just <laughs> it's a, it's a how, to, how to do better on the test lesson. But you can still adapt that if you want it to life, I think. You know, try to perform whatever you're doing in a way, in the most efficient way that kind of minimizes the possibility of making silly mistakes, right? That's the life lesson. So anyway, getting back to physics. Um, so now what we realize in order to find our answer, right, we're going to take two times the radius we just found, 0 0.779, and subtract from that then two times the radius of 0 0.693. And what we're going to come up with, and use the exact values from the calculator. So we're going to take two times that value, 0 0.779, the exact thing though, and subtract it now by uh, two times the, you got to go searching, 0 0.692708, blah, blah, blah. And here now the answer comes out to be 0 0.173. Okay, 0 0.173. And that is now in terms of meters. Okay, that is the distance now, my friends. That's the distance of separation here. Okay, in centimeters, that would be roughly 17.3 centimeters now. Right, you move the decimal two places. Or 173 millimeters, I don't, it, right, who cares? They're all the same. So, anyway... I hope that helped, guys. A very complicated problem, but if you take it step by step and draw a picture, it ain't too bad. So, anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. If you can subscribe, it definitely helps us out tremendously. Like buttons also help, too. You know, helps with that algorithm. And, um, yeah, tell your friends. All right, we appreciate it very much. Have a great day.